what is your genes integrity mechanism that triggers star formation out of this interstellar species in the dense sites. Okay? And what is the equilibrium maintained for our that is your hydrostatic equilibrium at the cost of your inward dimensional force and outward radial force. Okay? So this condition, that is collapse condition, dimensional collapse condition is uh, achieved with the help of mass of the DMC just exceeding the critical genes mass. Okay? And at the, this cost is when the radial force becomes lesser with respect to your dimensional force only then this occurs. Okay? And this is one typical picture of your dust control cloud. And uh, here also how the uh, taken this is a video taken from your internet, how the structure formation takes place out of this uh, dust molecular cloud, that is one just a formation of your solar system, you can have one cartoon type of video this day. So this is one visualization. And just keeping this in your mind, in our mind, we also uh, formulated one theoretical paper theory about this structure formation, uh, planet formation out of dust molecular cloud, and there uh, we also found out that circular rings, concentric set of circular rings, ultimately result in the form of planets. And planet formation, that conjecture was given long as well by Laplace, but it was lying unexplained. And the work which explained this was, okay, this was the work given by myself and my student, and this was about this nonlinear dynamics of structure formation, the interplanetary. This, okay, so this was also done, anyway, in this context. And here, here what is your more important is your, the light dot integral. Those are your quantum plasmas, and so let us distinguish between the two. Okay, so classical plasma, so that is your low density, high temperature, whereas the quantum plasma, that is your opposite. And what is the DGC parameter by which, which uh, formalism has to be applied, whether it is classical or quantum, that is decided with the help of your d from d or d by d wavelength in relation to your intraparticle distance. Okay, so and naturalistic existence of these uh, quantum plasmas are multiplicitous. Okay, everywhere these are available, so electron gas, the semiconductor devices, the metallic nanostructure, the interior of <coughs> compact objects, which what we are interested in, then intense laser metal interactions, that is also, okay? And uh, there are also few examples, even including your quantum dots, then white dots, neutron stars, etc. okay? And another important point is that we are interested in the acoustic wave. So what is the acoustic wave here we are interested in? Again, what happened? What is behaving this way? Okay, okay. okay. Okay, so what we are interested in is your nucleus acoustic wave or acoustic waves of nuclear origin. So everybody knows what are acoustic waves. So these are longitudinal waves uh, triggered at the cost of inertial species and your uh, restoring species or thermal species. So normal in normal gas, what we are getting? We get one is your uh, constitutive particles behaving as inertial species. Again, the same particles behaving as skinning species. And because of your uh, competition between inertia and elasticity, these type of oscillations are uh, produced, okay. and these oscillations we get, somehow get room velocity, they become waves. Okay, so waves are what propagatory oscillations are waves. So we are interested in the acoustic waves at cost, at the cost of your uh, inertial species, that is your nuclear species, and your spinning species or thermal species, that is your degenerated electronic gas. Okay, so this is the just a differential picture between the two, and these are fundamental differences. Out of that, in case of plasma, classical plasma, what we talked about, uh, D Broly, uh, here we talked about D Broly, there we talked about device, here, here we talked about D Broly, <coughs> so here. So, this in case of classical plasma, we talk about Gibby number XCT, super critical value. That is your super critical. But in case of quantum plasma, we never talk about that. Instead, we talk about VYD number. That is number of uh, particles in the VYD sphere. Okay? And another important is that already I have mentioned about this density temperature coordinations and uh, about the research activity. So, classical physics, classical uh, plasma is going on for since e equal to 0. But quantum plasma is still using your infancy state. So that's what we are interested in. Okay? So here, just uh, this is again one field diagram as far as your uh, HF diagram. Okay? So increasing mass, and we are increasing your uh, time. So as per that, here you can see what is there. So if the mass is, mass is between these, 
then what happens? You get your uh, white blood. So white blood density is there. Okay. So again, it is a little influence. Anyway. Okay. Okay, fine. So here you see the, how the density density is placed, is portrayed for this uh, particular configuration. Okay. And here this is the area red gen. But this is the area density is placed here. You get interested in to find out your acoustic waves, either by your nuclear species. Okay? And as you know, this is again popular, everybody knows the concept that these are all, they are collapsing in the stages of the stars. And depending on the mass of the core, if it is, uh, it is your uh, comparable to sun, then it becomes hard to have. If it is uh, super solar, then neutron stars. If it is hyper solar, up to 50 solar mass, then it becomes your black holes, right? And the material density goes as this in a side -wise. Okay, so this is again one known concept, fine. I'm not going to do. Now the, what are the formalisms available? Single orbit theory, but we cannot apply for quantum plasma because it is degenerate plasma. Then what is there? One is your ESD. Yes, ESD theory you can apply for our quantum plasma under consideration. Then again, MSD. That is beyond our scope. Another is a kinetic theory, that is also beyond our scope. So we are will be sticking only to the fluid dynamical theory. Okay, so accordingly, what we have considered, we have considered plasma uh, model under quantum mechanical regime, and uh, and all these realistic factors have been considered, and our interest is particularly to see the fluctuations in the acoustic, low frequency acoustic domain. Okay, so this is the physical model we have considered that uh, multi-fluidic plasma model consisting of heavy nuclear species, okay. then lighter species, then again your degenerate electron species. Okay, electrons are relatively degenerate within inner core, whereas one is relatively degenerate in the outer mantle. And mixed action of coronal spore, mm -hmm. then confined blood pressure, then cell gravity, disc elasticity, and bone potential exist together. Okay, and considered physical model is realizable in the case of your compact astro objects, particularly dot tunnel. Okay, so this is well known the onion structure that for the star uh, at the core, what is there? That is your heavy nuclei because of your cell gravity. This is also well known. And so, what we are interested in the compact astrophysical objects, acoustic signals, etc., at the core, that is at the cost of again heavy nuclei. Okay, so this is a schematic diagram. Okay, and this is again. So, what we consider? What is your uh, constituents are there? The constituents are here, as you know, in the core. So, this is your core, and this is your mantle. Okay, and these are typical parameters taken from different sources. Anyway, so and these are the Bowen equations. So, we are interested in the theoretical aspects particularly. So, first one is we consider spherical symmetric geometry under that uh, simplified geometrical consideration. Uh, this is your uh, mass conservation, <coughs> continuity equation. And this is your momentum equation for electronic dynamics. Okay, and this is your this is called your quantum potential. That is bone potential. It was written now. This is the potential considered. And uh, this is a polytropic equation of state. And this is your polytropic uh, constant, polytropic constant, polytropic <coughs> exponent. And accordingly, this value, this is whether it is relativistic or utter relativistic. So these are these features are modeled with the help of these polytropic constants. And the light nuclear species again governed by your continuity equation in spherical coordinates. And these are all usual notations, n for concentration and your u uh, for your velocity. And the equation of state is the isothermal part and one is your electrostatic confinement part. So that is again the beauty of our normalism that we have considered this pressure for the first time. Okay. And again, now heavy nuclear species. In addition to all the transfers that are considered here, in addition, we considered one is your rotational part, the other one is your viscoelastic group. <coughs> okay, so there are two types of your viscosity, shear and bulk viscosity, right? And the significances are well known, shear resistance against flow and your uh, bulk viscosity against expansion, radial expansion. And again, the equation of state is again the same, okay? Electricity confinement pressure for heavy nuclei, it is also considered. Right. Now, after this, we just normalize the equation with all the standard parameters. These are all standard parameters in the astronomic sector. Okay. And uh, after this, we get the scale free, that is, normalized equation uh, of the governing uh, species, uh, governing the species. And these are all the corresponding equations put in respective form. And now we are interested in the regular wave analysis or spherical wave analysis under spherical asymmetric geometry. 
So as per that, we get all the linearized equation at given value. And after getting all this linearized equation, we apply the method of decoupling and simplification. So as per that, we get a complicated form of generalized linear dispersion relation. So this is the linear dispersion relation, and you see how long it is, okay? And these are various coefficients occurring there, okay? So now the complicated equation is going to be simplified, okay? Under the approximation of low frequency fluctuations. Okay, under the ultra low frequency fluctuation limit, that complicated equation gets simplified into this simplistic form. Okay, now it is simpler. Now no problem. Numerical analysis to carry out, it is uh, very easy. So accordingly, at the zeroth order, what we did, just numerical solution. So as per that, we found that because of some, if you are interested in stability behavior or instability behavior, first is your equilibrium is well defined, and against the equilibrium, which is part of the system, and because of this perturbation, even the frequency has two parts, one is your real part, which is the normal behavior, and second one is the perturbation because of this force. So as per that, okay. As per that, we have just uh, uh, numerically analyzed, and accordingly, what we find here, we see from here that uh, the first your <coughs> mu, if mu goes up, if it is increases, then what happens? It is our decreasing, okay? Your growth rate decreasing, okay? So as per that, from this picture, in both the, uh, your outputs, uh, non-relativistic as well as relativistic regimes, we are finding this thing, okay? So that is your uh, your stability, that is growth rate, decreases because of this increment of mu. And what is mu? Mu is already given the ratio of the charge densities of the heavy to the light nuclear species. So accordingly, what we can conclude is that in, in, in that mu it acts as a stabilizing agency for this fluctuation dynamics to undergo. Yeah. Okay. Accordingly, we have identified another. So here again, we find that here again, we see that uh, as per this, if the value of beta increases and beta is already defined, nuclear charge to mass coupling parameter, then what happens? We are again getting in both the regimes that beta acts as a destabilizing agency. Okay. Then again, another parameter that is your rotation. It was already considered as the heavy fluid under consideration. So with the rotation, we have again found that what happens. So with the again, now it is a reverse picture. With the increment of this your uh, rotation value here again, here here again in the real part as well. Then again, we are getting it is accelerating at the same time. It is destabilizing. Okay, it is destabilizing. So what is the destabilizing parameter in this context? It is the Coriolis force. We have found accordingly by numerical analysis. Okay, so we have just, uh, after this, the entire picture has been in both the non-relativistic as well as relativistic regime has been uh, verified with the color spectral profiles. Okay, and accordingly we have verified. Okay, so it is fine. It is going on fine. And after that, these are our main conclusions derived so far. Okay, so from this uh, analysis, so consisting of uh, several parts, so we have found that uh, one generalized hydrodynamic model has been constructed to explore the acoustic dynamic of nuclear origin, that is heavy nucleus, excited acoustic waves in our system, then various stabilizing and destabilizing parameters have been identified as well as graphically illustrated. For example, this figure one, figure two, figure three, and again, further, it has been verified with the color spectral profiles. Okay, then presented analysis. Okay, useful uh, to, to see the evolution of diversified waves and instabilities and various compact astrophysical objects. Now, the most crucial, crucial part in this forum, at least in this forum, is the astronomical detection. Okay, so let me tell you that astronomical detection is still going on, and there are several authors. And they are also, the, all these authors are in contact with me, okay? So they always say, from time to time, we are also trying to collaborate, and they are all experimental astronomers. Uh, they are astronomers, basically astronomers, I am a theoretical person, anyway. So they, they, it has been long efforts are going on, but because of uh, lack of resolution, refinement, it is not possible, still as of now, to experimentally, uh, precisely determine it, okay? Because of low frequency, okay, fine. Okay, so still, but in the future, we are hopeful that it is going to open new chapters, okay? Although still it is in the infancy stage, okay, and uh, these are the basic references, and I am uh, at the same time very happy that same formalism has been applied, and just recently one paper got published, okay. So this is again a new mode, okay. So it is your gravito nuclear again nuclear acoustic mode, okay. So this is again different for uh, compact astrophysical objects in the form of uh, 
neutral structure. Okay, anyway. So thank you for your attention. And before conclusion, before ending, so I want to end that once we accept our limits, we go beyond that. Albert Einstein. Okay. So, yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Professor Kormokar, for your nice presentation, you can see how plasma is actually monitoring uh, this uh, universe uh, and you have shown how one can use this concept in white dwarf formulation. So anyway, uh, the question is uh, open to all of you. You can ask questions uh, because uh, Professor Kormokar had started from the beginning of uh, plasma physics, very interesting one. So if you have any questions, any queries, Quickly, one or two questions we can pick up. Yeah, please. So, in your growth analysis, I see the relativistic counterpart and the non relativistic counterpart, they are very similar. Yes, very similar. I mean, then you suggest that the effect of relativity, the relativistic corrections are not really important. Yes, it shows like that. Yes. And otherwise, <coughs> there is one drawback that we feel in the foundation itself. Okay. It will reflect just normal hydrodynamics, okay? And the relativity effect uh, has been uh, monitored or it has been included only through the Chandra Shepard formalism, okay? That's the Okay. But we could have started with that relativistic formalism at the outset itself. Steam for using equation of state for relativistic theory. Yeah, right. Yes. Sir? And uh, I have one more question related to your analysis. You are emphasizing on ultra low uh, frequency limit. Right. Uh, what is this? I mean, why you are focusing on that part? Why you are excluding the high frequency limits? No, see, so here in the configuration what I have shown, so in the mixture, if there are so many mixtures are there, so heavy mass, geo mass, and infinity mass, etc. Et so anyway, when the inertial species is your high mass, heavy high mass, then that corresponds to low frequency. So low frequency again, uh, in that context, you can. So, are you saying that uh, low mass means. Uh, high mass means low frequency. So, the inertia takes place here? Yeah, yeah. So, inertia is this is this one. And not only that, that from the experimental <coughs> point of view, what I mentioned, this frequency is in the sub micro hardest, very low. Okay, so that's why it is physically, astronomically, this is this may be the reason, but theoretically we didn't consider that because this, this, that time this we didn't find this literature. Okay, and we just approximated by your mathematical approach. Okay, that uh, the second order, uh, second degree term we survive, the rest just approaches to zero under this condition. So this is theoretical work. Okay. But there are marks to be defined. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Professor Kormokar. Thank you so much. Yeah, so we call the next speaker, uh, Rajesh Shukrapal from Karimganj College, Assam. His topic is Distance Estimation of Star Forming Clouds, CG12 and LDN1225.
everybody. I am Rajeshwar Pal, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, Kolmogorov College, and I am doing research under the guidance of Dr. Kumar Shekhar Das, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, Assam University, Shimla. My topic is the distance estimation of two star forming clouds, that is, cometary clouds CG12 and LDN1. Now, the determination of distance of small dark globules, actually it is very difficult to calculate because of their compactness and opaqueness. In our study, we have determined the distance of the two high galactic globules, that is CG12 and LDN1 to 5, using the MRI photometric technique. And with the help of this technique, first of all, we have calculated the two mass data and then we have calculated the distance from using the Gaia data. And after that, we have drawn the picture of extinction versus distance, and there is an unexpected rise in sudden rise, that is, we call it sudden rise in extinction, which is called as the distance of the cloud. And uh, we have calculated, with the help of this technique, the calculated distance of CG12 is 693 plus minus 19 per sec, and the distance of LDN 125 is 569 plus minus 18 per sec. And these values are comparable with the literature published earlier. Now, why <coughs> it is important? Actually, we see that the studies of the physical properties of dark clouds are very important for understanding the formation or evolution of the stars. <coughs> And photometry <coughs> and polymetry are very much important to study the various characteristic properties. Actually, we have seen that the distance estimations of dark globules is very difficult because of their field stars. And some techniques are used in many times. And uh, we have uh, used uh, uh, one of the techniques, uh, and uh, it is the Gaia data technique. And we did with that, with the help of that uh, Gaia data, we have calculated the parallax, and with the help of uh, uh, parallax, we have uh, put the formula, that is the distance formula, and we have calculated the uh, distance of the particular cloud. Now, this is the simple, this is the dark cloud, this is the basically absorption nebula, and this is a type of interstellar cloud, that is a molecular cloud, and it is basically so dense, it is obscures the physical object wavelengths from the object behind it, such as the background starts in the emission of reflection nebula. Actually, these are the dark globuli are we call it at blob levels. And this is the molecular clouds, and we have taken only just an example of uh, Barnard uh, 60 cloud. Actually, this is the molecular cloud, and the molecular clouds are considered the ideal region for the star formation mechanism. And actually, molecular clouds are very old. And this is the dense region of the interstellar medium, and this is containing 90% of the hydrogen and 10% of helium and many other molecules. And actually, the molecular clouds can be divided into three categories. One is giant, other is dark, and other is small. Uh, first of all, giant molecular cloud, basically it has a diameter of 15 to 600 light year, and it is composed of 90% of H2 and 10% of uh, helium. And another is, that is the dark molecular cloud. These are diffuse filamentary clouds, and these are visible at high galactic latitude. And the typical density is basically 30 particles per cm cube. And the ranges of the solar mass is 0 0.1 to 100 solar mass. And it contributes 10 to 20 parts by massively molecular gas contents in local intermolecular mass. And this is the small molecular cloud that we call it as block bubbles. Actually, these are the very small molecular clouds. We are considering this type of clouds with very old gas and dust particles. And these are very much small. And this is very opaque and relatively isolated molecular clouds that having diameter of 0.7 per second to masses is approximately 10 molecular solar mass. Block clouds are typically less than 100 molecular mass solar mass in size and are relatively isolated. This is the properties uh, of these molecular clouds. Number one is basically size, mass, and its density. 
uh, this is a very important. If we need, do not know the distance of this particular cloud, then we can calculate the size, mass, and density, which will vary over the large distances. And uh, we can, in general, we know that the three different regions are possible in a molecular clouds region. One is clouds, number two is clams, and number three is holes. Actually, the prolongated region in the molecular gases it is clouds, and the possible regions of star cluster formation, this is basically clumps, and O is the basically the densest region which corresponds to the single star formation. And uh, distance of the various uh, papers have been uh, presented in various times, and they have calculated the various uh, methods for the estimation of distance. And uh, we have seen that uh, uh, Clemens and Barbinis in 1988, they have the most uh, important uh, of homogeneous of complex series of clouds and plates. And uh, in uh, Sandish and Linus in 1976, they have calculated the compactness of um, low globules. And many other scientists have calculated with the help of Levon Leonard's and Hannings in 1977, they have calculated the uh, globules that are located is very much further and they have used uh, other techniques. And uh, our calculation is the CG12. Actually, this is the longitude and latitude is given, and this is the R attack value. And this value is uh, estimated in 2000 and calculation data. And uh, this is the reference distance we have uh, seen. And this is first one is for William Seattle, and second one is Merco, and third is uh, Barnett, Moisture and Edwis. And they have calculated the cometary globe with this uh, RN deck value, and they have calculated the distance in their techniques, actually CG12 CG and uh, lines 1 to 5. Uh, this is the literature they have studied. We can skip it here. <coughs> and uh, just uh, in our study, last part is in our study, we have determined <coughs> the distance of these uh, dark globes uh, using our technique, the analyte right technique. Basically, this is a technique, and uh, here we have uh, introduced the uh, two mass data. The two mass data is basically two micro mass size survey data, and uh, from distance calculations, we have taken the Gaia. This is Gaia 2016 and 2018, we have followed, and <coughs> with that, we have calculated the extension versus distance curve and uh, where the sudden rising extension gives the uh, distance of the particular cloud. We will show it in the later. And this is the, our photometric technique. This is the NRI filter. Uh, in, in, this, in this filter, we have seen that the three wavelengths, uh, that is uh, JHK, the, uh, the values are given, JHK magnitude. And in that uh, NRI technique, we have calculated the uh, extension and the distance. Here, first of all, the absolute magnitude versus uh, extension uh, equation. Here, this is x minus mx. x is basically uh, jhk. If we put it as uh, j, that is j minus uh, mj, and this is 5 into 1 minus log. This is the formula plus a of x means a of j. Uh, similarly, we can uh, use that for h or a also. And in case of extension, also, a b is uh, uh, 1 divided by 1 by, you uh, take it as j, that is uh, 1 by a j by a b, and j minus n x, uh, plus that, in case of uh, h and uh, k also, holds. And uh, in our photometric uh, technique, in uh, three unknown quantities, uh, we determine this is the two mass technique, and uh, there is, uh, using this analytic technique, the distance of a star <coughs> estimated, and this distance of the dark loads, from the distance versus extension, we plotted. And this technique could not estimate the distance of the star accurately due to the consideration of unknown quantities in this model. And the uh, release of Gaia data gives the opportunity, and this is the main point, <coughs> that the Gaia data, after the discovery of the Gaia data, uh, we are uh, we have able to calculate the distance, uh, means first to calculate the parallax, and using this method of calculation of distance, we have calculated the distance of the cloud. And this is our uh, analytical method, or what step uh, we have followed. Uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, uh, collected the data. This is the basically Aladdin software, that is all-sky surface software. 
and the problem we had, we have calculated the field of view, we have taken the field of view, and from that, uh, we, we have, uh, we have uh, calculated the server distance, server, this is the distance sky server, and using that server, we have taken the data, and after installing Aladdin, uh, we have found out the photometric data of the cluster, this is the VGI database from astronomical catalog, and then uh, we have extracted the photometric magnitude of uh, RA deck value uh, via VGI, and we have considered that are 25 by 25, and arc minute squared, this is the field of view, and then we calculate the uh, two mass uh, catalog, using the two mass catalog, we have calculated the JHK values, and lastly, uh, we have moved to the uh, Gaia Gear 2, that is uh, Gaia collaboration, that is 16 and 18, and we have calculated the parallax of a star, and using that parallax, we have calculated the distance of the particular star from the cloud. And this is the formula, this is the interstellar Three reading. minutes, three this minutes. Yes, this is the interstellar formula. Uh, <coughs> and uh, using that formula, we have calculated the uh, extension and distance, these are the two formulas. And now, just for one minute, this is the two mass data. Actually, two mass data is basically uh, two micron all space survey data. Uh, and uh, Gaia data is basically space observatory, European space observatory. And this is uh, launched in 2013, and uh, it will be expected to operate until 2025. And from that, uh, we can calculate the one billion astronomical objects, mainly the stars. And this is the uh, Aladdin, and uh, this is the uh, Aladdin software, uh, and uh, this is the, the two mass data uh, we have uh, using this photometric method, and uh, this is the bio data we have calculated using that. And this is uh, basically CG12. What is CG12? This is CG12. This is basically cometary globe, CG12, and isolated globe, and relatively small, small star forming regions of high galactic latitude, and LBN12 is also a dark globus and isolated towards the surface of the cloud. And uh, this is the uh, condition that I have uh, adopted uh, for estimating in the JHK value and the parallax. First of all, I have uh, uh, taken, and this is a uh, high signal to noise ratio, which is, <coughs> that should be greater than one for uh, uh, quality flag, it should be AAA, which is requires the ratio to be greater than 10. And for the uncertainties, we have taken the condition 0 0.045 less than, and uh, J a minus k less than 0.75, these are the conditions we have adopted. And then in the next stage, we have calculated the distance formula. Distance formula is 1 divided by parallax into 0.001, and error of uh, distance we have calculated. And uh, the distance estimation is here, uh, extension versus distance. Uh, here showed that the distance at which the first sudden increase is gives uh, the extension and this is the con considered the distance of the cloud. This is very important. The first sudden increase and that will indicate the distance of that cloud. And this is the data we have uh, taken and, and uh, here we have seen that in all the cases this is the uh, condition is satisfied in all the cases that we have taken and uh, uh, at more 57 data. This is 57. This is for JHK data, and this is for uh, Gaia database. We have calculated also uh, the uh, 57 and clouds. And uh, here, this is the extension versus distance curve for CG12. And here also, uh, this is the data we have adopted. And, and this is the uh, ultimate picture. And here, we have seen that the cost mark. The here, this is the cost mark means the center of the cloud. And uh, the 27, that is the sun number 27, is the distance indicator of the cloud because in that particular region the extinction occurs. And this is the CG12. And in the similar fashion, this is for LDN. And, and this is the Qatar Qatar base for LDN. And this is the extinction versus distance for LDN 125. Here also, uh, this is the extinction versus distance curve. And here also, this is the uh, post mark indicates uh, the center of the cloud, and this is the 23, that is the number, this is the sudden increase, and this indicates the extension. And uh, this is the summary and conclusion. And in our study, uh, we have determined the distance of the dark clouds of 
CPTL, then in LTN 1 to 5, that is the, uh, using the GHK photometry and Kaya photometry, and uh, we have calculated the distance in this method is 693 plus minus 19, and this is 569 plus minus 18 per sec respectively. And here we have compared this estimated distance. Our estimated distance is 693, and this is uh, basically comparable with the uh, Morocco and 14 and they have calculated in 1978 with their techniques and uh, the lens it is 569 and this is also comparable with this published and our future work we have planned to uh, then other molecular clouds with that same thing. Okay, so thank you very much. And this is that the yeah, Thank you very much, uh, Roger. And uh, now the session is open for uh, discussion. Uh, if you have any question, yeah, Sanjeev. Actually, uh, we have seen that uh, the, the field stars are uh, not available for other clouds, that is for small clouds. That we have, that's why we have uh, switched to high galactic temperature cloud. How much is it? I mean, uh, is basically 360. Any other questions? This data are publicly available. Yes. Okay, so if there is no question, then we should thank speaker for a nice presentation. Now we are going to the next speaker. After this talk, I think a tea break is there. rotation matrix multiplied by the uh, tri-dimensional matrix. So here uh, it is simply the TBM2 pattern. So here in this it gives the value of the uh, mixing angle, this theta 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 mixing angle, it gives the value of the uh, 3 mixing angle and this is for the Dirac's. So actually in this work uh, using uh, some constant value of this 2 constant, I calculated these values of the mixing angles and the Dirac's. 
uh, using RD, I'm going to take the stability with the variation of the uh, supersymmetry Bracken scale. There is the PZ Bracken scale. Yeah. Uh, from the cosmological bond, uh, which is given that uh, some of the um, um, absolute neutrino masses should be uh, less than the 0 0.12. Using this uh, condition criteria, uh, I use the, uh, the input value of the three neutrino uh, masses and as an input and with the variation of this huge breaking scale, I, I derived from the uh, 2 to uh, 14 TeV in this book and I also varied the seashore scale from 10 to 14 to 10 to 16 GeV and also I varied the uh, free parameter where is the 10 beta from uh, 10 to 30. And for these different cases, I study this in this work. Okay, in this work, uh, I use the top-down approach. So uh, actually, the top in the top-down approach uh, from high energy scale, that is uh, 10 power 16. Uh, I derived uh, from this in this high ener high energy scale. I derived 10 power 14 to 10 power 16 GeV for uh, for different high energy scale. Uh, I uh, using top-down approach from high energy scale. I bring down to the low energy. That is the allotropic scale. And I also, uh, I also use the Shuji renormalization group equations to, uh, from MR2. This is, this is the high energy scale, and this is the, uh, uh, this is the intermediate scale. So there is the Shuji breaking scale. And using uh, certain mapping conditions, uh, I, I use uh, from this MR2, MS, and from MS2, electrophobic scale. Uh, in this intermediate MS scale, I use this uh, matching condition in this top down approach. Actually, what is uh, I'm going in this lockdown approach is just to bring from the high energy to the low energy. That's why it is the lockdown approach. And in this intermediate, I use the certain matching conditions. Okay, here is uh, here. This is the input data. Uh, actually, uh, some uh, in top-down approach, I need some input values. So uh, there is at the high energy scale. This is the Cicho scale. I uh, where I can about 14, 15, 16 under this certain. Uh, Energy, high energy scale, I use, uh, I also vary the 10 beta, that is the free parameter. So, 10, 20, 30, I use this three. Uh, and here, this is the uh, coupling constant, I use the input values. Uh, I didn't mention here, but I have already calculated this value at a high energy scale. So, this is the input uh, data for the comp uh, coupling constants, and this is for the mass eigenvalues. This is from the, uh, which is satisfy the cosmological data, and this is the uh, and this one is the three phases, and this is the uh, mixing angle. So uh, this is the input of the <coughs> input data uh, of this work. Okay, uh, this is uh, this is my work. Uh, in this, I take the stability. For, so here I vary uh, Suzy breaking scale in TV. This is from uh, this is from two to 14 dB, and I check the uh, mixing angle, that is uh, theta 2, 3, theta 1, 2, and theta 1, 3. I check the stability. So uh, with a at higher uh, Suzy breaking scale, it maintains some stability. So this shows some stability, and this is the data um, of my work. And here we can see that uh, for uh, this is for the different uh, uh, values of the 10 beta. That is at 10 part. This is for the 30, and this for the 10 dollars for the 30, and then 20, and 10 beta, 10. So here we can see that uh, higher the 10 beta, the higher value of the uh, theta 2, 3, we found the higher value of theta 1, 3, and it maintains some stability at a higher uh, Suzy breaking scale. There is some stability at a higher. So it means that the, uh, we prefer higher values of Suzy breaking scale. So uh, according to the uh, last Hadron colliders, uh, it uh, 14.2, 14.4, I think 14.4, uh, they have uh, only found, uh, used uh, the Suzy breaking scale around 14 point something. So I take only 14 uh, mm -hmm. scale. Yeah. Uh, this one, uh, this is for the 10 beta. Uh, for the uh, previously, I I vary the value of the 10 beta. Here, I fix the value of uh, 10 beta equal to 20 for different values of the uh, seashore scale. It is for the uh, 10 bar 16, 15, 14, and this. So we can see some stability. Yeah, the similar patterns, we observe similar patterns. You can see here from this 
that have uh, higher values, at higher values of this regime practice, that it um, uh, maintains some stability, uh, rough stabilities of the end. And here, this is the data. And here, uh, this is for the different values of the Shisho uh, scale. We found some similar patterns and maintain some stability uh, at a higher uh, 3G brightness. That this is for the uh, uh, mixing angle and for different values of the Shisho scale. And this is for the mass square difference. Uh, this mass square difference is uh, somewhat very stable as compared to the mixing angle. Uh, for the different values of uh, Shisho scale, uh, this this is for the Shisho scale for the but for 16 and this for 15 and this for the 14, 16, 15, 14 GB. So here we found some stability. It uh, maintains very stable as compared to the mesh angle, the previous mesh angle pattern. So this is uh, very much uh, step. It uh, maintains some stability at a higher Shisho uh, Suji breaking scale. So we prefer uh, higher Suji breaking scale. Here, so uh, this is the data, and uh, we found that, uh, uh, and this is for the data case. Uh, it increases uh, here. We can see that it increases with the uh, it increases with the increasing uh, Suji breaking scale. Here, it also maintains some stability. Some stability we obtain here. For this is for the uh, ten beta equal to twenty. I fix the value of the ten beta, and ten beta at twenty. So 